Welcome to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am explaining the movie, Nobody, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this. Hutch went about his daily routine, jogging in the morning, preparing breakfast, missing the trash truck on Tuesdays, sharing coffee with his wife, working, and then getting back home at night. On a Monday night, two people broke into the house. Hutch grabbed a golf club and wanted to dial 911, but they stopped him. They asked for money, and Hutch showed them all they had. They asked for his watch and his ring. Hutch noticed a tattoo on the lady's hand when she was taking off his watch. When Hutch hesitated to give the ring, his son jumped on one of the thieves from behind, holding tightly to his neck and calling out to his dad to hit the lady in front of him. Hutch wanted to hit her but stopped midway and told his son to release the thief. The son released him, and the thief punched the son. Hutch's wife, standing at the top of the stairs, begged them to take whatever they wanted and leave. They left. The son was disappointed in his father for not standing up for him. When the police came, they noticed that the intruders had entered through the garage door. Hutch slept in the living room that night. His daughter came to meet him, telling him she was not scared since he was there and suggesting they get a cat. The next morning, while they were having breakfast, his son asked if he could interview him for his veteran report assignment. His mom suggested that he interview his uncle, Charlie, since he was a real soldier, but she apologized when Hutch looked at her. Hutch suggested that he could interview Grandpa instead. Frustrated, Hutch threw the pancake he was making into the trash can. When they left, their neighbors sympathized with them about the break-in, and both Hutch and his son admired the car the neighbor had gotten from his dad after he died. When Hutch got to work, Charlie came to meet him about the robbery at their house. Charlie told him his son said he had a chance to take one of them down, but he didn't, so he gave Hutch a gun for protection. Hutch kept the gun in a fridge in his office. His father-in-law sympathized with him about the incident and then asked why he wanted to buy the company from him. Hutch simply replied that he wanted something of his own. Later that day, Hutch turned on a radio in his office while drinking. The person on the other side of the radio asked him about the robbery at his house. Hutch told him that the intruders were in their late twenties, scared, and desperate. They had a gun that hadn't been used in a long time and had no bullets, which was why he couldn't hit them. The man on the radio said he understood— and warned Hutch not to do anything serious. After work, Hutch went to see his dad at the nursing home. He brought him some food, and when his father assessed his mood, he told Hutch to remember who they used to be. When Hutch got home, his daughter couldn't find her kitty bracelet, and complained that it was in the bowl the robbers took the money from. Hutch went back to his father's room. He took a gun, an FBI ID, and a coat, then went to different tattoo shops, asking about the tattoo he saw on the robbers. They couldn't help him. When he got to a certain tattoo shop, they pointed out that his ID was expired by over twenty years and told him to drop the act as men gathered around him. He explained he was looking for someone and raised some cash. A man among them noticed the tattoo on his wrist and fearfully took his leave. Hutch pointed to the tattoo he was asking about from the collections on the table and asked for the address. The robbers, a man and his wife, were about to have dinner when Hutch burst in. He reclaimed his watch and asked about the kitty bracelet, but they begged that they didn't take it. Hutch heard a child crying in the room and went to check. He saw a baby receiving oxygen. Feeling bad, Hutch ran out into the rain and punched the wall aggressively. On his way home on the bus, some men drove recklessly alongside. They begged the driver to let them in, and when they boarded, they bullied a man off the bus and moved threateningly towards a girl. Hutch escorted the driver off the bus, closed the door, and then took out his gun. He removed all the bullets and warned them. The men confronted him, and they began throwing punches. One of them stabbed Hutch with a knife, but he pulled it out and stabbed one of them in the wrist. Then he pulled out the knife and stabbed another in the leg. They ganged up and threw Hutch out of the window. One complained of a broken nose, and another of broken teeth. Hutch got up from the broken glass on the floor. He returned to the bus, told the girl to leave, and mercilessly attacked the men. One tried to reload his gun, but Hutch knocked it away with a rod from the bus. He continued hitting him until he was down. The man struggled to breathe so Hutch made a makeshift airway with a straw, allowing him to breathe better. Then he left the bus. When Hutch got home, his wife asked where he had been. He showed her the bruises, and she helped treat his wounds. Hutch reminded her of how they used to be, explaining that they hadn't embraced, kissed, or been intimate in a while, and she felt distant from him, which wasn't how things used to be. Yulian arrived at a bar, took a shot of liquor, and sniffed some cocaine. He then went up on stage, danced, and sang for a while before going backstage. Approaching a group of men, he asked if they were satisfied with the security they had, and they responded positively. 
However, they complained about his black right-hand man. Yulian assured them that he was Russian at heart. Another man criticized his dancing as inappropriate for someone like him. Ignoring the criticism, Yulian grabbed a large man, slashed his face with a broken glass, and twisted his neck until he died. He was informed that the man was one of their shareholders, but Yulian didn't care, and they welcomed him to the team. Yulian received a call about his brother and rushed to the clinic. Angered, he hit one of his men, also in the hospital bed, with a car, demanding information about who had harmed his brother. His anger escalated when he learned it was just one man. Eventually, one of them handed him Hutch's office card. When Hutch got back from his morning jog, he happily made breakfast. His son asked about his face, and he replied that others had it worse, mentioning that he was pleased with how he took down the robbers. A call came in, and when Hutch picked up, the man confirmed he was the one who took down the intruders the previous night but warned that one of them was Yulian's brother, whom Hutch should avoid. Hutch ended the call and told his family it was a distributor, then they made plans for dinner. At work, the same person texted him to ask about Yulian from the barber. When he arrived, the barber gave him a file on Yulian and warned that Yulian might already be looking for him. Yulian ordered his staff to dig deeper into Hutch's background, wanting more information. They sent a threat message to someone who could get them information about Hutch. The response included threatening pictures of people he had killed, which she gave to Yulian before quitting. Yulian then sent men to capture Hutch alive. That night, while Hutch's family was having dinner, his son suggested they go to Italy for the summer. As Hutch looked out the window, he saw a convoy of vehicles approaching. He rushed his family to the basement and warned them not to call 911. Hutch took down most of the attackers one by one, but he was electrocuted and passed out. They dragged him into the trunk of a car. Yulian's right-hand man ordered the men to deliver Hutch to Yulian before treating their wounds. Hutch woke up, freed his hand from the cuffs, and peered out of the car trunk. Hutch took out the fire extinguisher and pushed through the back seat, spraying it until the car somersaulted. He got out and retrieved a key from the car. Yulian was trapped under the car. He asked Hutch who he was, and Hutch replied that he was nobody, a mere auditor. Before he could explain further, Hutch saw that Yulian was dead. Hutch hurried home and called his dad to stay strong because of what had happened. After taking a bath and changing clothes, he went to get his family, making sure to cover his daughter's face. When they reached the car in the garage, Hutch told his wife he needed to handle the situation because that's who he was. She made him promise to come back for them, and she would take the children somewhere safe. Hutch took the bodies of the men to the basement, and told them about a man named Allen who had stolen three million dollars from the U.S. military. He had been sent to kill Allen but ended up sparing him when Allen pleaded for his life. A year later, Allen was happily married with kids and a dog, which made Hutch jealous. He quit his job to get married himself even though he knew it was just a facade that he didn't expect to last. Hutch gathered all the gold and cash they had, set fire to the house, and drove off with his neighbor's car. Two men went to Hutch's father's home and pointed guns at him. Before they could pull the trigger, he drew his own gun and shot them. He then turned up the TV volume to confuse the staff member who came to check the noise. Hutch gave gold to his father-in-law to buy the company. Charlie opposed the idea, but his father insisted he had no say in the matter. Hutch shut down the company and began working on things in the factory. The man on the other side of the radio warned him about his actions, but Hutch didn't want to listen. He went to Obshack, the company managed by Yulian, and burned down the building while Yulian was performing at a club. Hutch sat where Yulian could see him after his performance. Yulian approached Hutch with his men, but when Hutch revealed the bomb he was holding, Yulian sent his men away. Hutch told him that burning down Obshack settled the score for Yulian sending men to his house, which was against the rules. He challenged Yulian to come after him, promising that if Yulian succeeded, he could rebuild Obshack. Hutch continued, suggesting to Yulian that it was a good time for both of them to quit Obshack and live normal lives. He left Yulian to consider it. Yulian sent his men after Hutch when he reached his car, and they pursued him, including Yulian himself. They fired continuously at Hutch's car until all the windows shattered. Hutch returned fire and maneuvered until he reached the company. Taking out the painting he had obtained from Obshack, Hutch headed for the building. Yulian and his men were also present, and one shot Hutch in the shoulder. A window in the company opened, and the man from the radio began shooting at Yulian's men, while Hutch's dad emerged, firing to cover Hutch's entry. They all hurried inside, with Yulian and his men following closely. Inside, Hutch's team engaged Yulian's men one by one. Hutch activated the bomb he had set at the entrance, causing an explosion that incapacitated some of Yulian's men and knocked Yulian unconscious. Hutch's team eliminated any of Yulian's men who approached and triggered other bombs strategically placed earlier. Supporting each other, 
Hutch's team fought off the remaining men until Yulian regained consciousness. Yulian shot Hutch's friend in the shoulder, and they took cover behind a large machine when they ran out of bullets. Hutch set a bomb on a glass door and ran towards Yulian, who was shooting continuously at him. When he got close to Yulian, he activated it, and it blew up in Yulian's face. Hutch's team helped him up, and he thanked them for their support. They heard police sirens approaching, so Hutch told his team to leave while he dealt with the police. Hutch called his wife and promised to do better if she gave him a second chance. He found a cat and took it with him. At the police station, officers asked him who he was, and he simply replied that he was nobody. Then they received a call and let him go. Later, Hutch and his wife went to check out a house with a real estate agent. During the visit, the agent received a call for Hutch. After he took the call, Hutch asked if the house had a basement. His wife finished his sentence, understanding what was going on.